Hi there, this is John Barton from JB Cases. Um, this is one of those rare times when we have a lot of cases that are done or nearly done. And I want to show you our diversity. So, uh, starting with our leather cases, our high-end leather cases. Uh, this is one that we did. It's a beautiful case, all colored in blue with the tooling left natural. This would be an example of the, the best that we can do. And also it's got our new interior on it where you can just reach in, pull the interior out if you need it. Easy to put back in, no problem. So that interior can be taken out, can be washed, can be exchanged, whatever you need to do. Uh, we go to a plain black one, like this right here with oil tan. Same thing, interior easy to take out, no problem. Just reach in, pull it out. Put it back in, no problem, easy to do. Um, this is to show you guys that we have a, a wide range and diversity of interior types, colors, uh, case types, whatever you want. I, I think honestly that no other case maker at this moment offers as much diversity as we do. Um, so here for example is our nylon line right here. We call this the ultimate rugged line. Um, Obviously two-tone color, very nice, uh, nice rubber bottom, everything's nice. This one does not have a rubber interior, so what, we, uh, sorry, a removable interior. So what we do here is we put a, we put a ring of nylon around here so that it, uh, it can't tear. So it's going to be very durable and last for a long time. Um, however, on request, we can, we can also make this case with the removable interior. So that's what custom is all about. Here's a baby brother to that one. These cases are being made on request for three-piece cues. And this one has four slots inside, which you probably can't see, but anyway. Same as our nylon case, everything the same. All the same quality, made as a travel case for a three-piece cue. You need a one-by-one. One. Well, you have one like this right here. This one happens to have my cue inside, which is a, uh, a Jensen. So that's what I'm using right now is a simple one by one nylon. Okay, now here, for example, we have our, our butterfly case. This one holds four cues and eight shafts. Um, you'll see it's got all leather trim. We do all, all, the, all the stress points. We use leather for strength and durability. This one is a custom job right here. The customer wanted larger pockets, no handle on the top here, and he wanted his strap on the back. So we did a butterfly case just as he requested. Here's one in leather. This is beautiful Napa leather. Gorgeous. Made the way that we normally make it with a handle here and the strap on the side. You've got a non-slip grip uh, using suede for the padding here. The interior of this case, you open it up and it opens up to gorgeous red right there. So it's a beautiful interior. Uh, also highly padded. Everything's easy to use. I don't even know what interior is in this one. So the customer requested black. So this one's black. Now here, we have another one in Napa. This one is a combination of regular Napa and some patchwork. So we got nice patchwork on the back, and then for this one, when you open it up, you get blue. So we did a nice blue interior for this one. Okay, so here's a few of our, a few more of our nylon cases, the Ultimate Ruggeds. We call it the Ultimate because it has three pockets, joint protector pocket, top handle, and uh, if it doesn't have the this pocket and the top handle, we call it the Basic Rugged. So here's another one in brown. This one's brown with brown with tan trim. You'll notice we can we can mix and match everything on here. So here's orange with dark brown pockets and orange trim. Here's a nice blue one. And these cases are very tight, by the way. So it's it's probably hard to explain or show you how well built they are uh, on video. But once you get one in your hands and you feel it and you feel the quality and you compare this quality to any other case in this price class, 
you'll understand uh, what a great value that these basic rugged cases are that we build. So we put the protection at every price level um, and make it affordable for everyone. Okay, here's a mason case. This one we happen to be making for the, uh, the AZ Billiards um, membership drive giveaways. So we put their little logo on here, AZ Billiards. And this has our magnetic latch, as you can see. See how that works? And a nice red interior for uh, two butts and four shafts. And actually, in this case, you can fit an extra shaft so it'll fit two butts and five shafts. And then one thing about our cases, pockets are easy access, easy to get into. All of our lower pockets, we provide a, a place for jump cue handles. Everything is super easy. We do our own magnetic latches. We build these all by hand, so they easily go and close like that. You want to get into the pocket? No problem, you can get into the pocket here. We got an extra space here for chalk and joint protectors. So that's an option that we put on some of our cases on request. Um, here's another one that we did in a distressed leather. This is a Napa that we abraded. So we wanted to give it an antique and distressed look. And this is a, um, <clears throat> a four by eight, no it's a three by six, I'm sorry. This one's a three by six. Also with our removable interior and magnetic latch. See how nice that works? Just like that and it's closed. We invented that by the way, the way that this works. We call it the magnetic puzzle latch. Okay, so moving on. Here's another of our custom cases featuring full tooling. Just to give you a little bit different look. Now here's a, here's a different type of latch. This one is called the puzzle twist latch, okay, because it doesn't use magnets. What we do here is we just use leather, natural leather to hold it, and then you just twist it normally. So it's very few moving parts, almost nothing to break, and very, very, very strong through here. So this, is, this can easily hold the weight of the case without breaking, which is a problem with latches. And here's another thing. This particular case has our tubes. So this is secure tubes. These are individual tubes for each of the parts, so that we do this on request. This is a little bit heavier, uh, but some people prefer that, and then we do it because we're a custom shop. Okay? We are fully custom, by the way, so whatever people want, that's what we do. Here's another mason case. This one's very pretty. This one's done um, in black with brown tones, as you can see. This one, we put, the, uh, we put our logo underneath the handle. Not sure if that can be seen, but this is a beautiful case. And uh, I want to show you something on this one that we invented. Um, basically, I wanted to put a removable interior on all of our leather cases. So I figured out how to do that and make it look really good. So what we've done is we've beefed up the, the, uh, the inside right here, this part right here, and I made it where this part fits in like a puzzle piece. So this whole piece, if you want, if the customer wants to, they can take it out just like this. Just reach in, pull the tab over, and you can pull up on it, you should be able to, and take the whole thing out just like that. So if there's any problem or anything with it, it's not a problem. You can just pull it out. Anything gets stuck or whatever, or you just want to change it for whatever reason or clean it, it's not a problem and it's very easy to put back in just like this and that's it and it's in and it looks seamless once it's in and again magnetic puzzle latch magnetic puzzle latch fits right over there just like that beautiful okay so here's a, a GTF that we just did GTF is a brand owned by Indie Q Shop um, that's uh, Roy Malott in uh, Indianapolis. And uh, this is a custom one that we just did for one of his customers. So this is an extremely lightweight case. Very beautiful, done with a red interior, excuse me, a red interior on request. So you'll see it's a very sleek case. This is a two by four. Very sleek, very slick. 
um, just as he wanted it. That's probably the smallest 2x4 size in the world right there. Um, another mason case. Beautiful and lightweight. And as you can see here, laid out right here is another case that's in preparation. Also with some beautiful floral tooling, the western floral tooling. So let's take a walk real quick through the shop. <clears throat> this area right here is where we do all of our tooling and all of our planning. So you can see we're working on a lot of different cases here. Um, this one will be tooled today for Arthur Wong. We're making two cases for him. These are some cases for, uh, for some German customers over here. This is made according to a, uh, to a Zamboni design. Okay, the customer has a Zamboni queue and he wanted us to do the, uh, to match his queue, so we did that. Then, um, continuing on over here, this is a beautiful one right here that we're doing. We did, uh, we did an inlay here and um, we raised the inlay so everything's, it's actually a little bit higher than the, uh, than the body of the case. And we, uh, we outlined it with red thread, so it really pops on this case. Um, here, this is a case that I'm particularly proud of. Uh, this is all original art. This is all original, our, our own original Celtic um, art. We didn't, we didn't steal this from the internet or go find, any, go find a Celtic piece somewhere. We had all this drawn for the customer, um, so it's actually new art. And what we did here is we took this one design and we wrapped it entirely around the case so it's unbroken all the way around the front and the sides, if that can be seen. So it wraps, it doesn't, it doesn't stop anywhere along this side. It goes all the way around and never stops. And then we have another original piece on the back. And what we did here, because we didn't want to interrupt the flow too much, we're using very small D-rings here. And you'll notice, you can't notice this at first, but you have to look really closely. We sewed according to the knot work. So we didn't put anything over the knot work. We made, we made all of the reinforcement flow with the knot work. Um, so if you're wondering, you know, what JB Cases is about, the kind of things that we do, we don't do cookie cutter cases. We take a long time, we think about what we're doing, and we really pay attention to so many details that uh, um, sometimes people wonder, well, why does it take a little bit longer to get a JB Case? Well, this is why, because we do so many little personal details and so many custom details on these cases that... Um, it really takes a lot of brain power and a lot of thought to, uh, to put these things together. So anyway, here's another little magnetic latch that we're doing. And you notice we, we, we did this in a circle on this one uh, with Celtic in there. So I, I really like that case. Uh, here, uh, well, I'm not sure what we did with Archie's case, but here's, here's another one that's really cool. That's coming up in a few minutes, in, in a, uh, a little while, we'll have it done in a couple days. Um, let's see, what else do we got here? Uh, I think I've shown this one on video before, but it, it deserves to be shown again. Uh, this one here, I really like it because we're doing the contrasting stitching. We've done the, uh, the underlay or, you know, you would call this an inlay in, in, in uh, leather working, but it's not really an inlay. This is laid underneath the circle, um, but anyway, it looks really cool. And uh, we did a similar one for the bottom pocket right here, so that's going to come out looking really good. And uh, yeah, that's it for that guy right there. So now over here we have a <coughs> over here I have a a four by eight, also for uh, Archie Wong guy that we talked about earlier. This one has, it's a very simple case, 4x8, but it has the pockets on the inside of the case. So you'll notice when you open up the case, you know, you've got the two pockets right here, 
and he wanted his Wong symbol in gold uh, with a black interior. So no problem there. Let's not ship him this uh, shaft. I don't think he needs it. So we got that one. We use all kinds of leathers, by the way. So this one here, for example, is, a, is an elephant print. Okay, this is cowhide. It's Napa. This is a Napa leather. It's very nice and soft to the touch. But the beautiful part about it is the elephant structure on it. So we didn't actually have to kill an elephant to make this case, yet the customer still gets that exotic look um, that he wants on that one. Uh, here's some beautiful oil tan right here. So this leather is really cool. You can scratch this stuff and then you can just rub it out. All the scratches just rub out nice and easily with a little bit of oil, no problem, and then they're all gone. So you want to be a little bit gross, take a little bit of my facial oil there and rub it. And now it's gone or nearly gone. My cameraman is making disgusting faces here. So, uh, here's more mason cases that we've got going on. These are uh, lizard, uh, lizard print. So this is our coloring over here. You got Karen over there coloring. Um, yeah, so basically, that's it. That's JB Cases for you guys. Sorry this video is taking a little bit longer, but I wanted to really impress on you the wide range and diversity that we offer and, and impress on you that we are a full custom shop. Okay, that's very important because that means whatever's in your fantasy, whatever you've, you've thought about, we can do it. And whatever your budget is, if your budget is $100 or $200 or $2,500 or $5,000, we can make a case to fit your budget. So give us a shout. If you don't want to build it yourself, call JB Cases. And thank you for your time. Bye-bye. Hi there. This is John Barton from JB Cases. Hi. Um, I want to show you some of the um, some of the things that have been talked about on the forum lately about um, backing the leather with cardboard. Uh, as they say, you know, the cardboard is used uh, in a derogatory term by uh, some of the people who don't like me personally. And um, so apparently uh, they took apart one of my cases and they they found out that we use. Um, we use a certain type of, uh, of material for backing the leather on some leathers. And now uh, one of the guys thinks that that's a major derogatory point, that um, he's a big collector of a competitor of mine's cases. Anyway, um, let me go through and show you some of the leathers and the reasons why we use a different substrate uh, for the back of the case, or the back, I'm sorry, for the back of the, um, the material. So here we have a variety of leathers. Um, this is veg tan leather right here. This is saddle leather. This is what you would see, say, on a, uh, on a, um, most, say, justice cases, type, those types of cases, uh, those old J Flowers style. This is, uh, what you'd see on kind of a, a belt, you know, a lot of times you'd see this type of tooling. Uh, it's called tooling leather. It's called saddle leather. Uh, the most common trade name is vegetable tan leather or veg tan, although, uh, there are many kinds of veg tan leather. Um, Tooling leather would be the best description for this, and uh, because of the fact that it's uh, it's made in such a way that it easily accepts the tooling, as you can see here, so it will accept these impressions or carvings, as you can see. So, if there was carvings, it would accept that, and uh, and then those will uh, will stay permanently and in, embedded into the leather. Um, so this leather is uh, is one of the heaviest leathers that you can use and um, normally it's stiff enough as you can see it holds its shape really well and it's stiff enough that it will uh, it will stay in place whatever whatever shape you put it in it will pretty much hold that shape by itself so it doesn't need to be backed by anything if you come over here you'll see we have a we have what's called a Napa leather okay this is a very soft leather so you see you can easily crush it whereas you know this here you couldn't you couldn't easily crush it um, and so this leather here would need to be backed. Here's an example right here where what we've done on the back is we've used a high-grade fiberboard 
okay, to, uh, to back it, and then we just wrap the leather around that, and that'll make the shape for the pocket. So that way we can get pocket shapes that look like this with any kind of leather. And the bonus here is that this stays light, uh, so it doesn't add weight to the case. So the reason that we don't use this type of leather to back this type of leather is because it just simply adds weight and there's no real benefit to doing it. Um, this material here is especially made for the industry. It's used in millions of shoes around the world, billions of shoes really, um, handbags, uh, high-end handbags, everything, everything you can imagine. Uh, this type of fiberboard is used for exactly this purpose of adding stiffness while reducing weight. Okay, and of course, it reduces the cost because um, if I don't have to use this expensive leather to back this this uh, thinner leather, then I can charge less for the case and give you more case for the money. Um, so other leathers that would need to be backed, for example, would be uh, like Python here would be would be one. Um, here we have a we have a type of Napa right here, almost like an oil tan that would need to be backed. Here's a piece that we would not back, for example, okay, because it is again veg tan leather, and so on. So you can see here we can go through these, and you can see different types of Napas that we've backed here, and we do that so that they'll they'll hold their shape and look good and still have a nice clean pocket as you can see here get a nice clean 90 degree corner um, and have that beautiful appearance on the outside uh, that you want from the case so um, so that's why we do it thank you very much for looking I appreciate your time this is John Barton again from JB Cases just remember if you don't want to build it yourself please take a look at our website jbcases.com thank you very much bye bye Hi there, this is John Barton from JB Cases. I want to take a moment while I've got one of my cases in the right stage of construction to show you what we do on the uh, stress points to make them durable and long lasting. So uh, if you can zoom in here, let me show you what we've got going on here. On this case, as you can see, we're getting ready to install the rings, the holders for all the straps and for the, uh, for the handle. Now this is going to be the handle this is another thing with the handle is uh, we've, we've set it up so it's nice and ergonomic. All of our handles are very comfortable. And now I'm going to teach you how we do it where they, they last a lifetime basically. Um, so as you can see, the task would be how do I set this up on here where this is going to be really strong and durable yet look good? Well, if I simply were to sew it, if I were to sew it here, then it wouldn't last for a very long time. Um, so what we do is we rivet it like this on the back. We take two pieces of metal and we rivet it, one on the back side and one underneath in here, which you really can't see it, but underneath here is another piece of metal. So the leather itself, the leather itself is actually not taking the stress here. It's the metal to metal pieces that are taking the stress. So that's that then coupled with the hand sewing, which we do, this will be hand sewn all the way through here in a, in a double needle saddle stitch. And uh, that coupled with the metal pieces is going to make it very durable. Now by contrast, if you look at this case here which is uh, from 2006 and very lightly used, you can also see that, that it's also developing stress points right here. So that is starting to tear right there. Same on this side right here, you can really see it. This case here hasn't been very, hasn't been used very much and it's also starting to tear right here. So these are the things that we try to avoid. These are the things that we try to avoid when we make our cases. We want them to be durable and to last you a lifetime. And if you ever decide to, uh, to change your case, we want it to be because you don't like it anymore, not because it fell apart. So thank you very much. John Barton from JB Cases.
So what we're doing here is, because we make leather end caps here, the caps on here are all laminated leather. So what we do is, we shape this to perfectly match the leather on the body. So that way, when we come around and everything will be nice and flush, and uh, it'll be just like the, uh, the end of a shoe or a Q-tip or something like that. So that's how we do this when we do these leather end caps. As far as I know, I believe that we are the only uh, company right now making this type of case that is doing leather end caps. Um, and we like to do it because it gives us a lot of flexibility in design and we can match the color to a greater degree with the cue, with the case and also it's a lot easier for us to, uh, to get everything nice and flush and then basically the care at the end of it too is really good because you can treat it just like a, just like a shoe and you can polish it up using shoe polish or leather treatment or anything you want to do. And uh, you can always keep it to a nice shine. See here I'm just using a normal piece of canvas to shine it up and you can see right there that now I've got a nice flush end cap all made of leather and it matches the case beautifully. Okay, so that's what we, that's how we do our leather end caps. I believe that, uh, as I said, I think we're the only ones doing it. And um, just another thing that uh, makes the GTF cases really nice. So, thank you.